somebody know what is um what is their their journey i suppose like what yeah. what is for them because everybody has different gifts and we have different circumstances that we're born into so how does someone yeah. know that well that's great so it, I, I talk about that in my book i talk about seasons and i talk about seasons in in two different ways there are seasons that we go through uh, patterns in our life times in our life that match the seasons i'm in the uk at the moment so you know, they're pretty <laughs> much three months for each season yeah and the summer is great you know the birds are singing and the sky is blue most of the time and we do get a bit of rain in the uk mm. but it's, a, it's pretty it's good it's a good time but then things start falling apart a bit you know and things aren't working quite as they used to the relationships aren't so sweet as they used to be and the work's not going quite so well that's that's the autumn things start to fall away yeah and then the winter is when it's it really stinks and life is really hard and you're wondering how you're going to get through it's cold and tough and everything looks dead around you you know things that were once alive are now dead and it looks pretty dire but then the spring comes and suddenly everything that you thought was dead is suddenly alive again and actually it's stronger than it was before you've grown through your hard times you've got stronger so that's one type of season the other seasons i talk about is that we go through seasons in our periods of life so coming back to your question of how do you know your purpose i would say that everything that's happened in our life has got a reason to it so for example i, I would say grow from your roots i mean these these are part of my book grow from your roots mm. what was your upbringing what did you learn in your upbringing? Now, some people had fantastic upbringings. Everything's great, you know, couldn't. Well, you've learned something in that. But other people had really horrible upbringings. Maybe they were abused. Yeah. May, yep. Maybe it was a really tough time. Mm. But, you know, you've, do you know what? You've learned things in that time that you can help other people with. Mm. You've, you've got something that you've learned. You've got stronger in certain ways that you can learn. So look through a different lens in what you've gone through. So that's one area where you can start to learn what God's got for you. Mm. You've got different gifts and abilities. Everybody's got different gifts and abilities. Unique, special. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a, a brilliant singer or, or a you know, great athlete. You, you might just have a fantastic smile. Mm. Or you might have a gift of hospitality. Or you, you might have an ability with numbers or, or, or whatever. It could be so, so many different ranges. It doesn't have to be huge. Mm. But use whatever gift you've got to bless others, to do yeah, so when you, to others. Yeah, so when you talk about that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, some people go through a really difficult time when they're younger, some people uh, later in life or whatever. So is, is it kind of like reserving judgment until later in terms of like, um, you know, you might go through a bad situation and just say, well, like life is just terrible. But yeah, if you wait and things change, wait for that next season, then things can yeah. turn around again. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's like, I always think of the tree, it uses the tree in the Bible as a picture of, of our lives, you know, right. um, like it says, like a tree. Well, look at, look at the lifestyle of, cycle of a tree. One, the tree has to have a, a deep roots and those roots are really important. Just changing the analogy for a moment. Mm. My brother used to be in France and he was on vineyards there. And, and I learned an incredible thing there that, that if, if in the winter and the autumn and the winter, the it was very dry the grapes would be sweeter in the spring and the summer mm. because in that tough dry season the roots had to go deep yep. to get the nourishment to survive and so it's that with a tree you know there's a i'm, I'm looking out of my garden now and the, the leaves off the tree so they look as though they're dead those leaves look as though they're dead mm. but i know what's coming and that's how we've got to see our life yeah, you might be in that season. That you, it, it's really hard. There's, there's not a lot of life to see. You're feeling a bit dry, maybe. You're struggling a bit. Don't give up. Well, I like what Winston Churchill said. Never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever give up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. Keep, that's Keep a key going. word in life. Yes, it is. Keep going because it will, it will get better. It will get better. For my, because my upbringing, uh, my grandparents were um, were Christians, but my parents okay. were not. Like we, we were yeah. a very agnostic sort of family. Um, okay. So I guess so for me, I, but I would say about myself, I actually consider myself a very spiritual person. Um, okay. But f I think in terms of the details, that's where I guess it can kind of get a bit like some people will say, 
um, because I used to I used to go um, and uh, celebrate with the Hare Krishnas, and they they would say very similar things about Krishna, and I think that's totally fine because I for I feel like whatever gives you power is is great, um, and um, you know some people want to get into that detail, maybe some people don't. So I guess right. what I'm asking is how can people who maybe don't uh, necessarily want to get into that literature. Um, which may well be true, but it's it's difficult for everyone to kind of um, agree on everything on the small details. Right. Yes. Um, how do they connect to that sort of thing? Because there doesn't seem to be that much organization. Like a lot of people use the word like the universe. That's the word that I feel comfortable with because it encompasses everything, seen and unseen. And I know that like with the electromagnetic um, spectrum, we can only see like 0.01% of of yeah. all the matter that's out there. And they've got dark yeah. matter in, in science right. where you can say that's like, right. we can't perceive anything. We can't even hear a no. dog whistle. So yes. I, I get that, that there's like this incredible force that we're un, uh, we don't know anything about. And I also yeah. don't agree with the idea that the um, the universe is random because for me, it makes, yeah. it, it makes me think, wouldn't it all just separate and just disperse exactly. into a million pieces? Exactly. Um, the second, it's a second law of thermodynamics, yeah. We go yeah, from so, we go from order to disorder. It doesn't go the other way around. <laughs> yeah, and so the, the the synchronicity that must have um, occurred to allow us to be here now is just mind blowing. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the question is how do, how do people, modern day people, um, who maybe don't have the same belief structure, let's say, come to that feeling of 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 a greater power inside themselves? Well, I it's a it's a. I can only speak from what I have experienced. Sure. So I, I and I, 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 for them, I don't. I, what I, what I would say though is this: is that I believe, I believe, because God loves us all so much. I believe He's He's reaching out to us in in many, many ways and at many, many times. Mm. And so ma, ma, many people have had experiences. For example, my my mother-in-law. She was walking down the street one day and she looked up and she see she saw this amazing flock of birds. Yeah, yeah. Something in in what she saw spoke to her. Yeah. And and it and it gave her this inc- she, she was just amazed by it. Yeah. And she that now that drew into relationship with with God through Jesus Christ. She she thought well this this is incredible. Now other people listen to music there was yeah. me, me, who's that guy Mendes? I'm, I'm sorry, he's a brilliant. Uh, I should know him. A really popular singer, young young guy. Right. And he was sent this song by Maverick City, and he said, "I'm not. I've never been a religious person." He said, "But they were singing this song, and they were singing about Jesus, and I started to cry." Yeah. Is it Chris Mendes? I, I don't. I don't oh, I'm not sure, young, but I mean, the young uh, people yeah, listening would know. I, I totally. totally I was going to say, I totally understand that feeling of like, you know, I have that happen to me almost on a daily basis where I can feel like there's something bigger going on. There's just yeah. way too much synchronicity in my life and, and other people's lives that um, it can't just be random. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So I would say those moments, I would say that God is drawing, drawing near to you mm. and he wants, he wants to be in this relationship with you. Because it, because he's ultimate love. You, you so, what is that relationship? What is that relationship? Because I think that's what the issue is. A lot of people don't yes. know what it is. Yes, yes. Well, it's 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 a spiritual relationship first and foremost. The Bible says that God is spirit. Now He can appear as Jesus did, but He's ultimately spirit. Yep. And and so it's deep inside of us. It goes to our very core, our very soul, whatever however you want to describe it. Yeah. And it makes you whole. I know when I, I had an encounter with God in 1980 right. and um, I was 22 years old. I was captain of the track team. I'd had, in one sense, I had everything going for me, yep. but I felt this tugging on my heart. And I'd, I'd been brought up in a Christian home, so I knew, but I'd gone away from God. I was living my own thing, living a very selfish life. Right. And I felt God, I felt that, that, that God was saying to me, um, there was no one else around. There was no Christian music. There was no, no, no one else around. I was in my room on my own. Yeah. And my brother had written to me, he'd been into the drug scene and, and, and had come back to God, a relationship with God through what he saw in creation. And he wrote to me and said, Jared, I know you've got a plan for your life, but I want you to know that God's got a plan for your life made out of perfect love. Right. I couldn't get these words out of my mind Yeah, because I had a plan. And I, but how could I compete with the creator of the universe? You were just talking about intelligence design, you know, 
how could I compete with him? So at that moment, I just said, okay, all right. I don't want to live the rest of my life for me. I want to live for what you want because I recognize that your plan is better than my plan. Mm. And then I, as I did that, this incredible this love, it was like liquid love yeah. came yeah. upon me and I wept like a baby. Now, I was, I was a, one of the lads, you know, kept the tra- had, hadn't cried for seven or eight years. This incredible love came. Okay. And out, out of that, the result of that time, I fell head over heels in love with Jesus Christ. That might sound really strange, but yeah, it's sort of the best way to describe it. It was just this sense of love yep. For, yep. for God. And I, that one, first that he loved me, but then I loved him in return. So now, now this explains how the Christian life should work, because then when you really love somebody, all you want to do is to please them. That's yeah. the ultimate love. It just, you just want to make them happy. When they're happy, you're happy. Could, we say, could we say it's, it's um, appreciation? Like it's, it's something close to appreciation? I think it's linked to that. I think it's linked because I think, yeah, gratitude and, 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 you know, have an attitude of gratitude, I like to say, and yeah. thankfulness, appreciation. I think that that's close to it. It's when we start to look up and think, Wow, one of my friends, he was an atheist, and, he, and I'd been t- talking to him about Jesus, and he's, he said to him, when his daughter was born, he, um, he went outside, he looked up to the heavens, and he just said, I, I, I don't know if you're up there, but, but if you are, I want to say thank you. Because he, yeah. he associated his, his daughter being a gift from God to him and his wife, yeah. and he yeah. wanted to say yeah. thank you. So I think, I think that's very, and, that, and if people are struggling, oh, I'm not sure if I believe start giving start thanking god you yeah. can say i'm not sure if you're there but i want to say thank you you know yeah that's really interesting because i remember a certain time in my life where i, I remember I, I it was just a, a magical time um where like everything in my life changed i traveled overseas and i went and lived in japan for a couple of years and for me it was just incredible it was just an amazing experience yeah. because i everything was different everything i thought i knew was totally different and i can remember yeah. i came home from work one day Um, and I was outside my apartment, which was a a dingy old little apartment, but I loved it. You know, (laughs) I thought it was amazing. (laughs) And so I, I was sitting out there and, or standing, sorry. And I just started dancing and I'm not a dancing type, (laughs) but I mean, I I was just so happy and it was like, and I really felt like from that moment, my life just got better and better and better and better because I was like, just, um, what's the word like uh, vivid or. Um, just feeling the energy so much. And I yeah. do remember looking up and going, you know, thank you. So, yeah, you know, you it was interesting. Yeah. But do you think that there's something to um, when things, when you have that feeling that things actually, I mean, physically in your life get better? Like, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I do. But I do, I, I do think that, see, I mean, it's very clear in scripture that God's heart is to bless, mm. it is to do good to us. Now we've we've completely messed things up, humankind, but you know, by putting ourselves in the center and and trying to say, well, we're, it's basically self-centered when it should be God-centered. Right. And and I, I think when we come back to start putting God in his rightful place, it, it, on an individual basis, on a micro basis, bit by bit, it, on a macro basis, it starts to make a difference as well. So yeah. I think as we start to to thank God and we start to talk to him and have a relation, it's a relationship. It's not, it's not re- no, religion and laws. and re- No, it's re- not rules and regulations. You end up wanting to do the things that please him. How do I find what pleases him? Well, I find it in scripture because I believe that's God's inspired will in scripture. It's his, it's, it's his story. It's history, his story. And so we start to learn the things. If God says, you know, don't do that. It's not because he's a killjoy. <laughs> it's, it's because he wants us to be blessed. And if we do certain things, I mean, com- for example, committing adultery. You know, yeah, you'll have short term pleasure. Sure. But the long term pain and suffering, especially if there's children involved. Yeah. Unbelievable. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, it's not because he's a killjoy. So when God says things like that, it's because he knows what's best. He made us, for goodness sake. He knows what's best for us. Well, what about, and what so, about like, um, oh, sorry, I was going to say, what about feeling, you know, when people, um, I, I always be like I'm a big believer in Star Wars. And, you know, Yoda and Obi-Wan, they say, trust your feelings. I've always been a believer in your feelings are a guide. So how how does that fit in with that? Well, yeah, feelings, feelings can be great, but also they they can they can mislead you. 
So for me, I need an anchor for my soul. When I went through this catastrophic suffering, mm. um, there, there were way at times there were waves of grief and pain used to wash over me. Now mm. moments of despair. I needed an anchor for my soul. I needed something that I could hang on to when everything was falling around me mm. and it was so painful. For me, it's God's word. It's it's the promises in God's word that you know the great question: What is truth? <laughs> Well, I believe truth is a, is a person. And it, when Jesus came, it says the word became flesh. So I believe God is in the scriptures and the scriptures bring God, so to speak. So I took promises like in the Bible, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So mm -hmm. although I was going through such pain, I believe God was in, with me and he was working something out for his eternal plan and purpose. Mm -hmm. There was a bigger plan that I wasn't seeing at the time but I knew there was something bigger that he was with. I trusted him. That's a big part of love, isn't it? Trust. I trusted him that he was going to take me through this and turn it around for good. So I, you know, feelings, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't rely too much on feelings because they can go up and down. Like, you know, it's a bit like a, a level crossing thing. You know, oh, that's emotions. So I just wanted to emotions. define there. So like, so emotions can go up and down, but I kind of feel like feelings. I mean, like when I say feelings, I mean like your, your intuition and that sort of stuff. That's a, that's a, that's like, for me, I sort of see that as like the part of you that can see over the bridge ahead, but it's very subtle in nature and it's difficult to, yeah to actually access it you know people can access it when they're in the zone or when they're meditating that sort of thing um whereas emotions can go up and down so i agree Is, yeah, yeah. what do you think about that with the intuition well, I, think, I think that i think that we've got god's given us innate abilities <laughs> and i think there's a the sense of intuition our inner voice if you like uh, or, or conscience is another way you can describe it your conscience um i think that's one i think there's that's one of the many ways that, that god can lead us to the right path um but there's other ways we can get wise counsel from, from other people you know that yeah. we're not we're not on our own here we're with other people around us and so find wine god's as i say god's promises you know he wouldn't ask you to do something that he, he said don't do that <laughs> you know if you feel oh god's telling me to do that people say oh god's told me to do that no he didn't he didn't tell you at all well, that, that was wrong that was wrong intuition what? So how, how yeah. do you know when God's telling you something or when, you know, people might say it's their alternate personality or something like that? How do you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's what I mean. There are various safety nets. Right. So the ultimate one is is the scriptures. So right. God's not going to ever tell you to go and kill somebody. You know, that, that's clearly, you know, do not murder. <laughs> clearly things. Yeah. He's not going to go and tell you to sleep with someone else's wife or husband. It's, it's in scripture. So there's there's very clear things there. But then, then, then we are, when we come into God's family, we have family members around us, some yeah. of them who are much wiser than we are. Yeah. And we can say, well, look, I'm sensing that God's telling me to do this. I feel I should do it. My intuition is telling me to do this. What yeah. do you think? And so it's, I say it's a bit like a jigsaw. You put all these little pe these things together. So I've had some major changes in my life. There's been times where I had all, there was a period over four months when I was doing a major change. I was yep. coming out of banking in to go in to serve in a nonprofit. I took a 70% drop in salary. Yep. I had 18 different people send me messages to say, oh, I think God's telling me this. Or, right. or like I shared a picture or a scripture. Mm -hmm. And it was like putting a jigsaw together. And I, oh, it started to make, take shape. I started to understand right. that right. what I was feeling actually was correct in this case but sometimes it's not sometimes i remember i wanted to go into do a business venture and it wasn't right you know right yeah so okay so i've, I've got a question here this this might be our last one because we're running out of time but um this is a big one do you think that um we make up our plan for our lives or do you think that um that it is predetermined and if not or if so is there free will for people well, I absolutely believe in free will. You, you cannot have love without free will. And that's part of the problem we've got, you know, in the world. God gave us this freedom to say yes to him or no to him. Mm. And in saying no to him, we have disorder, okay, on a macro and a micro level. Mm. Does God have a plan for life? I believe, yes, absolutely he does. Um, and he wants us to go to, to, to find his calling on our lives, our destiny, if you like, our purpose. He wants us to find that. Mm. And that, that, that's a journey. It's a journey that we're on. And on that journey, really the most important thing is your heart. Mm. 
your heart, your heart that says, do you know what? I don't want to do my will. And that, that at the end of the day, it often comes back to simply, is it my will or is it God's will? And often yeah. the time it's, I'm, I'm, I'm being selfish. I'm doing what I want to do. And that takes me down another, another road. So if I, I believe if I keep my heart as far as I can, and I know I'm, I'm limited in how I can do that, um, Lord, I, I just want to do, I know your will is better for my life than my will. Please direct me and guide me. If I keep my heart, one of my favorite scriptures, Proverbs 4, 23, it says, above everything else, my child, keep your heart, because out of it flows the wellspring of life. Okay, so, the, so, so, that's, stop, yeah. so, the, so to me, that sounds like, um, so the, the, the heart is, is the way to understand uh, the right thing to do? It's a key. It's a it's a it's a it's a foundational key. Okay. Uh, because from that, I believe it, it makes it, it allows us to hear God's voice and to see things. If we get we all know if we get set in our ways, you're not hearing anybody. You're not hearing your parents. Absolutely. You're not hearing your friends. No, I, yeah. I want to do this and I'm going to do it. Yeah. So so we have to keep on. I, I say as far as I want, I want to be on a frictionless surface so that if God says go over there, I will go and I'll do what he wants me to do. Because I know what he's asking me is the best. Mm. I know it's the best. Mm. So I've got to keep my heart from getting bitter. It's, a, it's like a garden. Our heart's like a garden. There's weeds that can come. Yep. We can get discouraged. We can get bitter. Mm. We can, we can unforgive, unforgiveness is a huge issue. All of these things, and they clog up the garden, mm. and then we don't hear, and then we get into a mess. Keep your yeah. heart, and then the wellspring of life will flow. Okay, that's a good ending point. So keep your heart and let me say that again. The, the Keep your heart and then the, the wellspring of life will flow. The wellspring of life will flow. Okay, that's really interesting. <laughs>